Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why does Fox Business and the people who watch Fox Business and or read Fox Business articles like Andrew Yang compared to other Democratic candidates. So if you go on Fox Business, not Fox News, because it's kind of a little different, Fox Business is even more pro Andrew Yang than just Fox News. Which makes sense because Andrew Yang is an entrepreneur. So his background is almost identical to mine. Uh, He went to a good school and then he went to law school right after college. Uh, He went to Columbia Law. I went to William Mary Law. And he worked at a law firm for a little bit of time, decided that was not for him, and decided to create jobs as an entrepreneur. There's nothing I take more pride in than creating jobs. Uh, when you can provide for a, your employees and their families and their two kids and their dogs, multiple dogs, uh, that's something that um, not everyone can do. Being a boss is not easy uh, because you subject yourself to... There's a lot of things that happen in a business that are better not to tell your employees that are happening. Uh, I had to buy out my company from three different partners who owned 71%. Uh, One of them owned 20%, the other two owned each 25.5%. And I did not really involve my, during that time period where it was very, very difficult and I was eating rice and beans, I did not involve my employees. They still got raises during that time period. And for the most part, they didn't realize that we had, we were in financial difficulty because I took personal loans Uh, personal guarantee for these loans and um, luckily we survived but having the business mentality is something that I can appreciate Uh, not everyone has that and most people uh, a lot of Asians who criticize Andrew Yang I think are worried about oh what are my employees going to talk about in the water cooler and um, this has happened historically this is not unrealistic when China, or in this case, a Chinese candidate for president, becomes more and more of an issue, or more of more of a everyday talking issue, then yeah, you will have racism, you will have a lot of people discriminating based on race. That's just the country we live in. I mean, America is a fantastic country, but it's hard to avoid that. So Fox Business likes Andrew Yang because At the heart of it all, he is a businessman. Um, I think he is one of, um, in terms of the candidates, he doesn't have the political background as a Joe Biden or a Elizabeth Warren do, but that's good. That's why people, we elected Donald Trump, and I do use we. His policies do not discriminate based on whether or not you are a Republican, a Democrat, if you're a small business, if you're a big business, it's the same policy for everybody. And that really, really helps. And that's what attracted me to universal basic income. I had known about it, but not to the extent that I now know about it and how it would function. Universal basic income appeals to me as a social policy because it helps everybody, but it will help the people who have less money more. So to people with less money, $1,000 means a lot more to someone who's making two, $3,000 a month than it does to someone who's making 100 or Warren Buffett, 100 million every month. Um, that's not going to affect his bottle line. I mean, it's nice and he'll vote for it probably, but he received the same thing as, but the way that it's used is going to be very different depending on how much income you make. So the feedback from Fox Business has been overly positive, and I think they support his policies and his plans and his numbers. Uh, it is the only, he's the only person that, I, that has a plan to pay for this stuff with his sales tax. And I, I understand, yes, he has other ways to pay for the tax. Yeah, there's other scenarios that he's put out there. But the sales tax is pretty fair, in my opinion, where we just tax things more. And the more you buy, the more you pay taxes. I think that's very logical in my opinion. And it is a way, even though it's fair for everybody, it is a way 
to tax the richer and wealthier people more likely to buy um, higher ticket items. So if you buy a house for 100000 at 30%, you're going to pay 30000 which is, sounds a lot, but it's not anything compared to, well, I mean, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot less when somebody buys a home for a million dollars and they pay 300000 which is three times the actual cost of your home. So I like his policies. Uh, They make sense to me Uh, as a person who watches Fox News. um, I used to watch MSNBC News, but as I've mentioned before, uh, some of the things they've been saying recently, especially about Trump, they're still going on about Trump impeachment and Trump taxes. I'm like, if you have like this much energy to go on this issue, why don't you go on issues of gun control or, you know, other immigration? Why? It sounds like, you know, you're attacking the person and not the issues. And in law, Andrew Yang will appreciate that. That's considered an ad hominem attack where a person makes an argument or a person is uh, making arguments for certain uh, issues. But instead of addressing these issues, you're just attacking the person over and over again. And the person can be terrible. The person can be the most awful person. But that's a weak argument. Um, you shouldn't attack the that person. You should attack each of his or her arguments one by one and prove them wrong. And so there could be a lot of when if Andrew Yang is elected president, there could be more of a middle ground than we currently have. I'm not saying the current political system that we have right now is great. I think it actually needs a lot of mending. And I would suggest that people in Fox News and Fox Business also feel this way. You know what's bad for business? It's disruption. Um, Divides. Um, If you want to make money, you want to sell to everyone. The same with the NBA. Uh, I was very critical of the NBA for not, you know, the Hong Kong issue that was happening. And still happening. But China is a $1 trillion market for them. So can they really abandon that market? The NBA, can they abandon? That's why LeBron James won't speak about it. Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, even though they are very anti-Donald Trump, they won't talk about issues about uh, freedom of speech and um, what's happening in other parts of... It's not just Hong Kong. There's also Venezuela. Uh, There's a few other countries. I think uh, there's one in the Middle East that's protesting. I want to say Lebanon, but I'm not sure. I've seen that there's a lot of protests everywhere. And when you really, really think about it, you want someone to bring the country together, not divide it. And I don't think that will be like a Fox. Someone who watches Fox Business and reads Fox Business articles is not going to like Bernie Sanders ideas. I I just point blank tell you it. It's a tad socialism where... But it's not socialism in the way you would expect. So, of course, the the left always says it's the one percenters or the 10 percenters, right? I was reading an article, and I think if you're in the top 10% of income earners in the U.S., you make about 160, 180,000 a year. But it's not us against them, right? Um, it's not the one percenters versus the other 99 percenters or the 99 percenters against one percenters. Uh, that's not... It's that's the how the left has framed it, um, where it's the rich versus the poor, but that's not the case at all. Like when you talk about student loan forgiveness, it actually helps rich people more, because rich people, uh, the book that you read when you're wealthy, and I read the book. I'm not going to tell you what book it is, but uh, you probably if you have more, if you make more than six figures, you've probably read the book, uh, and. <laughs> Or have you gone to like a business school or a law school? Um, I went to a top 30 law school. And one of the things that, you know, your classmates talk about is reading this book about wealth. And now they give the same book to NBA players of how like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And it comes down to the rich invest their student loans and their other. So the rich is willing to buy five homes, mortgage them all to buy five more homes as long as those homes are making money. And that's how you get very, very wealthy. Um, It's not about paying off your student loans. It's about leveraging your student loans against a bigger investment that's making more than the student loan interest. 
And that's one of the things that you learn in this book is exactly how to do that and not to be afraid of debt. The majority of very wealthy companies in the U.S., not people, companies in the U.S., have massive amounts of debt on their books because they have better things to do. You know, do you know what a bond is? A bond is a company saying, hey, we need to get money from the public to, and, and government bonds are the same way. The government operates in the same way with a massive debt sheet. I mean, if there was anybody who had more debt than the government as a company, I don't know, than the U.S. government, I don't know who that would be. But that's how business is operated. It's not operated like you think it would be. So the people who student loan forgiveness helped the most are the people who went to Harvard Business, Boston College. I almost went to Boston Law School and our Boston, I think I got accepted to Boston College Law School and Boston University Law School, both of them. And I chose not to go to them because they were so effing expensive. And I'm glad, you know, I went to the a law school that was top 30, not as high, I think, as one of them. I think Boston University was higher at the time because I couldn't take more loans, which was a good thing. Hi, guys.